Hello everyone, I'm so happy you're able to join me. My name is Anna and um, today I will tell you how you can manage aircraft charges with uh, Liam. Uh, this webinar will be recorded, so after the webinar you will receive it in, in a link, so you always will be able to um, watch it again. <laughs> Additionally, uh, I encourage you during this webinar to ask any questions that uh, come up uh, on our chat. Um, our team is ready to answer your questions. Uh, and if anything will require more explanation, we can always schedule individual call with you and go into more details and have like more personal approach um, explaining the things to you. Okay, so let me just tell you what is our agenda for today. Well, first of all, I will tell you a little bit how to set the sales module. Then we'll look at how you can handle requests for quotes uh, that you receive by phone or email. And then we'll look at uh, managing requests for quotes originating from Avinode. Um, and after that, we'll look on how you can handle sub charges. Uh, we'll also take a look at the owner app and how flights can be requested via this tool. Um, after that, I will show you our sales report, a couple of sales reports, but those, uh, just to give you an idea how you can uh, basically use them and what is the potential behind them. Uh, then I'll just tell you a little bit about our API, uh, mostly about the po possibilities, how you can use it to enhance your sales. And the last thing will be uh, our development plans that I'm sure you are eager to learn about. Okay, let's just jump first to the, um, to the settings. Uh, for the size module to work, you need to set it up properly. You need to set the fees. You need to set all of the add-ons by those women integrations. Uh, you can set your email templates, document templates, and also in the settings, um, uh, the, the fleet settings also require some adjustments. So let me just show you how you can do it. Um, it will just take us a couple of minutes, but for those who are not using the sales module yet, that will be very, very important to learn. Uh, please tell me, uh, please give me a second. I will just share my screen with you, okay? Okay, so basically, you are uh, now you are able to see our um, our bookings view, uh, but we are in the sales, and here in the sales, you need to go to the fees. This you configure at the beginning when you start using uh, this, but of of course later on you can also add some more prices. So here you will configure aircraft fees, and below you will look at your airport fees. Of course you name those uh, price lists the way you want to. So those are just examples. Let us look at our standard price list. The standard price list, as you can see, consists of quite a lot of items. Some of the items, like let's say catering, um, you can have a special, um, let's say, trigger to it, yes? Yeah? So two hours, only then this catering fee applies. Um, and if I want to add anything to this, for example, I would like to add aircraft hangar fee, I can just add it. This will appear as the last item. And, and then I can just put uh, the price to this. You can select any currency you want to. It doesn't have to be Euro, of course. And you also put the name to that. So this way you are able to create various price lists, either assigned to particular types of aircraft or particular um, clients. Um, you know, it's, it's just, you know, or, or the way you are used. We just try to make it as flexible as possible. And if there is an item here, basically, if there is an item that you use and we don't have it here, 
just contact us and we'll add it for you. So that's the first thing. Let's just look then at the airport fees. Um, with airport fees, here I have created uh, medium jet uh, as an example. But again, you can have this airport fees, let's say for the particular type of aircraft that you use or for a particular range of aircraft. And here uh, you have your default price that will be used on all of the airports around the world. Then if I have here like UU Asterix, there will be all Russian airports. And then individual airports also can have some uh, individual prices. Here, for example, if I want to add airport overnight fee that is not added because it's not on the top list, I will just add it. It will appear here as the last item and also here as the last column. If I want to change the order, I can just shuffle the columns and I can say, OK, this will be after night landing. So now, if I would just go here, I will have night landing and airport overnight fee. Um, and then I can add the, the particular um, amount of money. And of course, you can uh, select any currency uh, you want to. There is all currencies are available. Once you have this, uh, this set, then let's just jump into the settings here. We need to look at the add-ons. In the add-ons, um, some of our clients are using airport charges. So if you are one of their clients, you can basically mm, contact airport charges to get a special authorization token. Once you provide it here, the integration will be active and you will get all of the airport charges, um, basically information in Leon. Uh, also, recently we have um, uh, added integration with DocuSign, so you will be also able to turn it on in this panel. Uh, and of course, marketplaces. As you can see, a lot of marketplaces are available. And um, uh, the integration with Avinode is basically the strongest one because, first of all, it is sending aircraft availability uh, to Avinode. Uh, and also it is downloading the quotes. Uh, so we'll definitely focus on this one. But as you can see, you can send your aircraft availability and flags to many, many other platforms. Um, and for example, like here with Avinode, if you want to uh, turn this integration on, you just need to go into edit. Uh, there is instruction what you need to do. So you need to contact tech support at Avinode to get a special authorization key. Once you get it, you just provide it here and you can turn it on. Then you decide for which aircraft you want this to be turned on. And then there are some additional settings that you can do. OK, so those are the integrations. And if you need any help with this, please, please, please contact our support. Team. Uh, then if we go next to the settings, we'll focus on the email templates. As you will see, there is a group of sales documents Mm, that requires that require emails when you send them to the clients. And what we allowed our clients to do, to have those templates, as you can see, you can add them yourself, as many as you want to. So you can have, for example, charter agreement, and the template of the email will be in Russian, in German, in French, in Spanish, all different templates available, um, just to make your life easier. So for example, let's just focus now on this one. This is the very simple template uh, for uh, sending the charter contract. Uh, but of course, if I want to uh, have any any changes in, in that, it's easy. I will just basically, uh, I can just change the text and it will be changed. So anything I want to add it here, it's not a problem. If you have someone in your company who is able to design websites, uh, is, has IT skills, you can ask them and they will be really able to basically program it very nicely for you with, with this uh, that we allow. Uh, and also here, you can uh, look at the recipient. So I, I can set from whom this email goes to and when they reply to, to which email they should reply. Uh, and I can also put the carbon co copy here. So basically here, the, you are able to set for each type of email, where the reply should should go and from whom uh, it should uh, should be sent. Yes, I'm logged as Thomas Delta, so that's why Thomas Delta is, is here. Okay, 
so those are the email templates. And then the next thing that you need to set will be your documents. With documents, we offer you some templates of each document. For example, let us look at the flight brief. Uh, uh, what we basically did, we built documents uh, that will have, let's say, the picture of the aircraft, the routing, also the information about the crew, uh, information about uh, the handling agents at particular airports, uh, and some passengers' details, and also some terms and conditions. But if you have um, some other type of a flight brief you would like to use, again, you can either use your own IT team to, to make use of, of, the, uh, of this, what, what we offer, and they will be able to create your own template. If you don't have anyone like this, uh, you can contact us. And if those changes are small changes to so the documents that we offer, then we do this for free. Uh, but if you have a totally different document, then we estimate the cost of it. And if you approve the cost, then we develop it. Uh, let me just show you one thing. I'm not an IT person myself, but if I want to add, uh, do some changes, for example, here I have the cancellation piece. If I hover, if I if I scroll, not hover, sorry. If I scroll down, you will, I will see that those are the cancellation piece. So the text is always black. So if I want to change it to 15% in the template, I save it and then the template will just save to 15%. So it will mean, okay, the cancellation fee is 15% of charter price after booking. Uh, so changing anything to the document, like the telephone numbers, contact details, terms and conditions, is easy. Um, so basically, you definitely need to focus on this before you start using um, the, sales, um, the sales functionality in the end. Then let us look at the fleet settings. Here, uh, for each aircraft, uh, you are basically, you, we, please, please enter the performance data. Um, the performance data is very vital from the sales uh, module perspective because we need those speeds to know how, uh, how, how long <laughs> the trip will take, yes? So what will be the time uh, for a particular flight? So those performance data, you can either have a simple model or advanced model, and then you can add uh, all of the times here. But yes, that would be the, the step needed to, to do uh, before you use, start using the sales. And then uh, here, there is a sales tab. You can um, here add information. So for example, aircraft fees, I can, have, okay, I can say, okay, our standard price list will be the default prices for this aircraft. Okay. Uh, for airport fees, we may say, okay, medium jet, that would be our, um, you know, default um, airport fees that will be used. And the same with the email templates, you can say, for example, okay, uh, this aircraft is flying um, mainly for the English speaking clients. Uh, so basically we'll use the English, uh, English templates of the documents, but you can save it. For example, if you have an aircraft flying in Spain, you can use Spanish templates as default ones. So this is something that, that we recommend. Here you can upload aircraft pictures, and if the aircraft has owners, you can add the owners here. Uh, if it's in a shared ownership, you can add more than one owner. It's also not a problem. Okay, so uh, for now, we are more or less um, set to start using um, Liam. Let me just um, let me just now quickly uh, jump back to our uh, to our presentation. So here, uh, what will be our next step? Now we'll look at uh, how you can handle requests for quotes received by phone or email. And first we'll look at the bookings view. I will show you how you can quickly add a request for quote. And together we'll go through the whole process from quoting, through booking, invoicing, and then sending a flight brief, and basically closing the whole process. Like, okay, so let's just jump back <laughs> to you. Um, just give me a second and I'll just handle this. Okay, so. 
We will start with the bookings view, as I was mentioning. The bookings view is pretty interesting thing we've developed uh, because it allows you quickly to know what happens with which aircraft. Like for example, this aircraft, there is, uh, you can add a reservation as a salesperson, no crew, for example, or reserved for owner, or any sort of reservation a sales team can make between themselves. Uh, this is easily visible. Also, if an aircraft is on maintenance like this one, we can see it, it is a brown color. Red is always a UG. So if anything happens that basically blocks the sales, you can see, okay, there is no point absolutely quoting on those days. Um, the green thing here is our flight. So anything below here will be the schedule. Uh, if anything is stripey, this means it is an option. So either a flight option, maintenance option, uh, so it's also uh, so that you know. And those kind of yellowish <laughs> things are the quotation, so the request for quotes. Uh, and if you are linked with Avinode, then those requests for quotes are also listed here. So you will have a lot of them for each day. Um, but as I mentioned, for example, if I will have here a lot of requests for quotes for this aircraft on that day, then I know, okay, we have no crew, so there is absolutely no point quoting. Uh, this view allows you to uh, sort aircraft by different uh, ways. For example, you can say, okay, let us sort them by packs capacity. And if I apply the filter, then they are basically grouped in a different way. Um, also here, you can decide which airport codes you prefer, what if you want you to see a local time, and if you want to see the subcharter aircraft, because um, some of our clients are using this functionality, some don't, so uh, you, know, you may not need that. Okay, so let us now look uh, at the situation when you receive a request for quote, uh, someone calls you or emails you, WhatsApps you, <laughs> you basically want to add it quickly. So I'm adding a new quote. Um, and let's say that this is our uh, Martha, Martha Adams, one of our regular clients. If it's a broker, you can also add a representative. But in a situation, this is a uh, um, client contacting you directly. Uh, minimum category, let's say that's uh, mid side jet. And you can already see, okay, let's just check Dillion. Uh, we have the whole schedule of Dillion already displayed. So we can see that those are the confirmed flights, but we know that the client wants to fly it on the 28th. So we can see, okay, on the 28th, the aircraft is available. Uh, so let's see. The client would like to fly from Prague mm -hmm. uh, to Geneva. And now you can either add departure or arrival time, one of the two. Uh, we need the date, so it is the 28th, and the time, local time. So let's say the client wants to fly at uh, midday. And with how many passengers? Two passengers. And already, as you can see, Leon is automatically adding positioning legs. Um, if you um, don't want to, you can always just remove this function, then it will not be added. But of course, it is just to make your life easier. Okay, so let's just create this one. So as you can see, this is a pretty fast way of knowing where we are and if the aircraft is available. If I know that I don't have any more bookings for the next day, I may decide to remove the last leg, uh, empty leg, because I may say, okay, there, let's just keep the aircraft um, uh, you know, where it arrives. So basically, let's just remove the last um, empty leg. We can do this, not a problem, uh, before quoting. And then, as you can see, for this aircraft, the Leon, already our standard price list was adjusted. So now we can see all of those um, items that are part of this price list, and we see the, the price that comes as a total. What is very important here, you can look at statistics. The statistics will show us if Marta contacted you before, we can see, oh yes, she did 25 times, uh, how many times you quoted and how many flights were sold. So that's kind of a thing that it's important to know. And if there are any routes, previous quotes on the same route, you will see 
the previous quotes and uh, for example how much you offered on the same route to Martha let's say half a year ago so it will be shown here and also to other customers how much you also uh, charge them for flight on the same route with the same with the same aircraft okay so now um we have this one and what we can also do before we send this to to Malta, we can of course look at airport charges airport charges will take a moment to download but they are checking all of the airports and all of the fees like for example here we have parking charge uh, for um, for Warsaw yes then in Prague we have a, a, you know landing charge and so on and so forth so the costs are all basically <laughs> here and if you want to uh, if you have uh, okay it, it has to be either the part of your price list like the landing fee you can download the airport charges that base they will automatically be added to this when you click it they will be added to make this price basically bigger with this uh, then uh, another thing you can then add some additional fee let's say for the client for each airport individually so we might say okay uh, let's just add here additional fee of one thousand um, dollars. All of those items you can basically um, adjust before you run at the final price. As you can see here, the price is worth some cents, but the price that will go to the client is always rounded. So you decide how you want to round it. Uh, if it's you know um, hundreds or tens, or you know, it's up to you. But that's that's how Leon will automatically adjust it. Now, what we can also do, we can um, basically add uh, if we want to send Martha two options, um, we can add one more aircraft. Let's say that we also want to uh, check H Leon. H Leon, uh, oh maybe okay. I see that this aircraft is not. Yeah, this is our test environment, so <laughs> sometimes it is not working as it should. Let me just, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, let me just, okay, add quote. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are in airport charges, but we need to go to the calendar. As you can see, H. Leon um, was on maintenance, but now we can see that the aircraft is available on 28th. Uh, what we can do, we can add positioning legs. Mm, of course, the aircraft needs to be added. And then we have price that comes from the different prices that we have for H. Leon, yes, the default prices. Of course, here you also want to add the, mm, the prices that come from airport charges. So let's just also add them here. Uh, and when you do it then this, the, there will be additional prices yes? uh, now we have two options so we have T Leon H Leon and let's just save it this way for now uh, Marta in her profile she has my email address <laughs> because I added um, and this uh, there, there can be also some notes about about her uh, as a passenger of course um, but there is also one important thing with this email address. Leon is able to automatically send takeoff report, landing report based on the uh, flight watch information that comes. So this email, when you add it to a particular trip, then um, th the system will basically do this automatically. And this email is auto populated when the particular person has the contact email. If it's a broker, also the broker will be interested to get so this sort of information. Uh, as you can see here, also Leon is doing feasibility checks. So if you will check it, uh, then we have information, okay, crew is not available in the roster. Uh, so basically, uh, this is something that can be fixed. If this is a red warning, red mm, exclamation mark, then it means, okay, we have a problem. Either the airport is closed or if it's out of range uh, of the aircraft uh, or, you know, a lot of things are being checked. Also, if a fuel stop is needed, Leon is showing you this sign then is suggesting you uh, where best to, to basically make this fuel stop. Okay, so let's just quote. Now, 
we can send this to Martha. We can send both aircraft. Uh, we can decide which templates we want to use. Of course, we'll use the English, but as you can see here, for example, I can use the Spanish template for the document. And also for the email template, I can use some others that I prepared myself before. So it's all up to me what choices I have. And uh, let me just show you the flight quotation. The flight quotation uh, is the template that we have, and it consists of um, two pages. So the first page will have our Gulfstream here uh, with the price, and then the second page will have our offer with with a different price. Yeah? So the client can decide which which one they basically want to pick. Okay, so let's just send this email out. Uh, it will go to my private mailbox. <laughs> it takes a moment. Okay, but now we have the status quoted. So it means, okay, the email went out. Let me check uh, my mailbox. <laughs> it should arrive. It should arrive. Yes, we already have this information. So Thomas Delta quotation. So dear Malta, okay, and now we have those two documents as attachments. So basically, I as Martha now I can decide which which option I prefer. So I can say, okay, I want uh, the more expensive one. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, and basically, if I send it uh, back, then this reply will appear in the system, which is very, very vital uh, from your perspective. But it also needs a moment or two before it jumps back. So in the meantime, while we are waiting for it, so now we know that we quote it. We don't know if Martha uh, basically reacted or not, but uh, here we can check the map. It will show us what we are doing. So let's just check also for Dillion. Dillion has a little bit easier trip here. Then there is the checklist. Um, the sales checklist allows you to add, um, you can have default set of items that you use every time. For example, with the contract, with the invoice, uh, with the flight brief, everything can have a status, and it's very important to to use this because if someone, you know, is to take over, uh, let's say the shift from you, and is to, is to take over uh, this quotation from you, then they will know what is happening. Uh, also, with with this um, with this set status is here. For example, the payment status can be linked to a special email notifications. So for example, if the payment status is changed to green, it can trigger an email that will go to those people in the company that you want to. Uh, some of our clients are using it this way, that that's why I'm kind of uh, telling you, but it's, it's possible to link this sales statuses to email notifications. Okay, uh, let's just look now at the passengers. Here in the passengers, uh, we, of course, need to be at the leg where we have two passengers. We'll, we'll select Martha because she will be one of the passengers. In her profile, you can see there, you can have more than one passport, as many as needed. You can have also national IDs. And you can put some information about her as a passenger. Um, you know, the, this information is also seen by the crew members on their mobile application. And it's like a shared knowledge how to basically make the service best for the client, what sort of wine they prefer, um, what are their habits on board of the aircraft uh, that's, uh, that they would like you to respect or, or basically um, cater to. So that, that's, the, um, that's, that's what you can have here. Every item, of course, you can have unlimited, uh, you know, the description can be very, very long. It doesn't have to be just pasta. Uh, what is good, Leon offers you ability to have different passport for arrival and departure, as uh, both for the crew and passengers. So that's also important. As you can see here, we already have the information about the messages. If I go, then I have the reply. 
that Martha sent me. Let's just wait a moment until it uploads. Okay, so that's what she said. Okay, thank you. I want the more expensive one. Thank you, Martha. Okay, so we have this uh, reply from her. Uh, now, what we can do, because we know the flight, you know, today is the 26th, and the flight is on the 28th, so it's not far away. So we may already want to change it into an option of the flight. The power of changing this into an option uh, is uh, this, that you can now, until now your ops department knew nothing about the flight, about the potential flight. Now you change it into an option and already the ops department can see that. So this flight will appear as a strike thing. So it means it is an option of the flight. Um, but already this says the, the ops team can start working on a checklist, arranging slots, um, you know, handling agents and so on. So this is something that uh, Leon offers and it just makes, you know, life of dispatchers a little bit easier. They have enough time to get things ready. Okay, going back to our sales uh, view. So now if we'll go to the bookings view, we'll see that this flight for is, is stripey. So it means, okay, it's an option of the flight. It's also stripey here, yes? So if we click on it, we will be taken to this quotation. Now we can send the contract. And sending the contract, as I was mentioning to you, it is possible to send it also for the docker sign. I don't have it here on the production, but I have another account that I can uh, jump to. This is uh, on our test, totally test environment. Uh, and here I have it. So let me just, for example, show you one. Okay, Air Heaven here. If I want to send the charter contract, I have two options. Either I can send it regularly by email, or I can send it through the DocuSign. And DocuSign allows the client to, you know, return it to you with the electronic signature. And uh, this integration is already available. So any one of you who would like to try it, just please let us, our team know, and we'll be happy to help you activate it and you will be able to, to you know, kind of test it in action, okay? So the DocuSign is just, just for the contract, but you, you know, I hope you, you'll like it. Okay, so let's just go uh, here. So now, mm, whatever Marta will write to us will appear in these messages. So if she's asking us about, you know, um, if she can bring the dog with her, anything that she wants to know, uh, this will appear here and there will be information. Once uh, the, we send the contract out to her and we do it exactly as we do it with a quote, she will receive it or she will go with the docu sign. Um, once we can go to our checklist, once we've sent the contract, we can say, okay, contract sent. So this will be an information for the rest of our team, sales team, what is the status? Once she sends it back, Martha sends it back, we are able to book the flight. When you book the flight, this changes the status of the flight. Um, you can, of course, send also to the client. We confirm booking, you know, this particular flight. Um, or you can skip uh, sending uh, the email and just book it. Once you do it, it will no longer be stripy in the ops view, it will become a sound color. So it means, okay, it is confirmed. And as you can see here, the salespeople from the moment the flight is an option have also overview of the ops checklist. So they, they can see if the handling is already confirmed or if, you know, um, let's say, depends what your, what your uh, ops team is arranging. If they are arranging, let's say, passenger transportation, then it will be also important to, to have a look at this, yes? You cannot change it from here. You can only change the sales statuses. But anyways, this is something that uh, can be helpful. Uh, then uh, we also have um, ability to send an invoice to the client. Um, and again, the template of the invoice you create yourself. Um, uh, all we need to do is for the number, <laughs> of the invoice, uh, the details of the person will come from the, the profile, but let's say that we'll just say, okay, it's Poland, and we need the VAT number, 
it's it was not submitted. Um, and this is the price that was the agreed price. And of course, the, the template of the invoice that we have is pretty simple. Uh, it looks like this, but generally you can have anything you want to. Um, and you know, it is also auto-generated with, with this uh, within the cloud. If you want to add some more items, on, you can add them here easily. Uh, what we also added uh, is the ability to add recharge invoice and also a credit note. So also, if you have those templates documents or documents in Leon, you can generate them from here and send it to the client, which is um, also pretty, pretty convenient. Yes, to do. Once we invoice the client, then the next step, okay, so I will not send the email, not to, you know, take too much of your time. Uh, I will just keep sending email. And then before the flight, you will send the brief. And I was already showing you the template of the flight brief. So basically, uh, it will show the crew members, it will show the handling agents. Uh, it will also have information about the time of the flight. And uh, once again, like here we have information about uh, the handling agents. We didn't have any crew on this flight, so that's why it's empty. Uh, name of the passengers right now, it was only Malsa. And then we have all of the terms and conditions once again uh, for, for her to see. Okay, uh, once this is done, uh, then basically we, we can click this as done. Done means, okay, the whole process is finished. We did it from the beginning to the end. Uh, we have it quoted. And I hope, of course, I did a lot of talking, but the, the workflow is pretty obvious. You go from quoting to sending a contract, booking, invoicing. If needed, you can have an option of a flight. Uh, and then you send a flight brief, flight brief at the end, and then it's done. And all of the messages exchanged with the client are here. Um, so it's also very important to, to kind of have it. Um, also, you can add some notes. I didn't mention that before, but you can add any notes. For example, if this flight has a different cancellation policy, you can add it here and design documents this way that it will take this changed cancellation policy. If there is something here, it will replace the cancellation, your standard cancellation policy with this one for this particular flight. You can have the sales notes, you can also add some uh, ops notes. So all of those notes uh, can, can be used later on for everyone in the company. Okay, so let's just now jump back to our uh, presentation and I will just show you um, how we can manage the uh, notes that come from uh, basically, okay, disable screen sharing. Okay, quotes that come from Avinote. Here we will look at the request quotes view. Mm, we will also, I will show you how you can compare the Avinote price with the price resulting from your price list in Leon. And then we'll also look at the mm, how the integration of Avinote chart looks in Leon. Okay, um, so let me just share the screen with you and Let's jump to this. Okay. Uh, this is where we've just ended, but let's just now look here. The request quotes view. This view will show you all of the quotes. Quotes coming from Avinote, quotes coming from Leon quotes coming from the owner app. So a lot of, uh, all of them are labeled. So if it's coming from Avinote, it will have the Avinote name. If it's Leon, it means you created or someone from your team created it directly in Leon. Um, so here you can easily see what's, what's the source. If I have a request, for example, like this one that comes from Avinote, then what I can see, I can see the Avinote price. And then I am able, to, if I add a quote, I can see what will be the, okay, let me just add a quote here. Uh, I think that because we don't have the performance data, okay, yes. Let me just 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So, as you can see, this is the price, you know, that starts to appear. This is our quotation, it's on a 29, yes. Um, so we can see, okay, the aircraft is available. Uh, potentially, we can do it. Uh, of course, we then we'll add the airport charges. Now we can see that this is the Avinode price. This is the price that results from our price list so far. But let's just change, let's say, to our standard price list. And then you will see that the price jumps is <laughs> the 29,000 euro uh, compared to 5,700 coming from Avino. So it all depends what prices you will use. Of course, this is a test environment and the Avino price is also coming from test environment. So please don't <laughs> take this price as something uh, which, is, uh, which has to be obeyed. But this is how you manage this. And before you send basically a reply, um, before you quote, you can either say, okay, we don't like it, we reject this, and then it's it's gone. Or you can quote it, uh, sending the price that comes from your calculation, yes? So, for example, if I will use, once again, the price list that we used before, <laughs> the price was really, really tiny little, yes? Uh, then we can add some additional fee. Let's say that we'll add um 4700 euro mm, okay additional sorry no it wasn't meant to be added here hmm. <laughs> no results to show okay but basically yes when we add this this will allow us to have um you know more or less match the avinote price if we want to yes if we want to um and then, okay, once again, I'll just add a quote quickly. I just needed to refresh the screen because this is test environment. <laughs> Sometimes it gets stuck, sorry for that. Okay, additional fee. And uh, here, additional fee, I wanted to add uh, seven, 400, 700, 4,700. So we are more or less around this price, more or less, yes. And then if I do this, I can quote, um, and this will be sent to Avinode. Uh, on the Avinode side, if I look at, um, let me just once again check, okay. Uh, if I look at this, um, then I can see, okay, that for example here is please find our offer. So on the Avinode side, this will also appear. And then uh, whatever is written, typed here, it will also appear back on the on, on Leon side. Uh, okay, I think this was okay. Let me just go to the to a different quote because I opened a different one. Okay, let me just look at this one. Mm -hmm. The one that I had open in Avi Note. Yes, this is the one he opened here. So, for example, whatever it appears on the chat here. So, um, you know, the broker may ask, can uh can uh, the um passengers uh take a dog with them for example and then if this is sent you will see that on the leon side uh you will see this in the message of course it takes a moment but here it appears i had it open so that's why I, it is already here and now you can reply to the customer to the avinode you can say yes but and of course then okay sorry yes <laughs> but uh you need to you know describe all of the conditions and everything and if you send it back then on the avinode chart already there <laughs> this appears so a lot of our clients that are using sales module are using this functionality because it just makes life so much easier. You have everything here. You have everything that comes um, uh, from Avinode. And basically, if you quote, this quote will appear in Avinode. Um, you can also send the contract. You can book the flight. So you basically go with the same steps, but it is all sent between Leon and Avinode uh, together. Okay, I hope this helps, but if you have any questions, it will be best to speak in details individually with you 
to help you set this up and, and just work out any problems that, that you might have about this. Okay, uh, let me just now uh, go to back to our presentation. So what is now our next step? Now we'll look how you can manage subcharters. Uh, I will show you how you can quote a flight uh, with a subcharter aircraft. Mm, we'll also look at the process of finding subcharters in Navinode. Uh, and uh, you will see how to correspond from Leon with an operator that is performing the subcharter for you. Okay, let me just show you the screen once again. Okay, here we go. So, if we go to the request quote or the bookings view, whichever view you prefer, um, you, we can create a new quote. Uh, and here, requested by, let's just use the same again, Martha, okay. Uh, what is the minimum category? Okay, let's say mid-sized jet. And now we don't provide an aircraft because let's say we know that Martha is one of our owners in the company and the aircraft that she usually flies with us is on maintenance. So we need to find a subcharter to do the flight for her. Let's say that she wants to fly from Vnukovo to Geneva. Geneva. Okay. And uh, departure date, she wants to fly on the 30th. Uh, and she wants to start at 11 local time, Moscow. Uh, number of passengers, one passenger. Uh, this uh, is already our flight. As you can see, the aircraft was already in Moscow. So even though I have at positionings automatically, at positioning legs automatically, it's not added because there is no need for that. And there are no more flights after. So also another positioning is not added. Mm -hmm. Let me just create this one. Um, okay, here, as you can see, we, we created this but we don't have an aircraft assigned. So we don't know the times, we don't know anything at this stage. What we can look at at this point, we can show stats. We can see how many times Martha contacted us, if it's a available client, but we don't have anything more. Um, what we can do, we can add uh, the new, basically, um, we can create a quote. Uh, we can select here, Subcharter aircraft. Mm -hmm. It will allow us to add uh, the registration of the aircraft. If you have already an aircraft in your in the database, if you used it before, all of those information will um, basically be taken from the the previous times you use it. So now let's just add it. So let's say that this is done by the operator ABC. Uh, the contact email will be my email, <laughs> okay. Uh, then the phone number, you know, this is not so relevant, but just to have it. Uh, you can also add the crew details, like let's say that this is Adam uh, Black, this time flying with Adam, sorry. Adam Black flying with us, then we can have the first uh, officer, the flight attendant, uh, manufacturer year, so let's say the aircraft was manufactured 2012, and it was refurbished this year. Um, you can also add pictures. So if you edit pictures, you can just upload files. Uh, for example, I have here some pictures we can use. Um, if I upload the files, then I can say, okay, this is interior, this is exterior. Uh, if I save those, then already the basically this aircraft's profile appears. I can also, let's say I contacted this ABC company. I know them. They told me what is the price. They say that they want to charge me 20,000 euro for this, for this flight. Then um, I am putting the price that I would charge the client, let's say 30,000 uh, euro. So this is the total price. This is, sorry, 30,000. It just recalculated the currency. Uh, 20,000, 30,000, yes. Uh, if VET applies, you can add the VET range, uh, rate. 
And if I save it now, then the system, oh, okay, the system is asking me uh, about the arrival um, time because it doesn't know the performance data of the aircraft. So we will say, okay, um, are we local? Okay, so the arrival time, let's say, will be 13, um, 20. Uh, and the block time is already calculated and so on. Of course, I made it up, so, so please don't. <laughs> um, okay, so now if we have it saved, uh, we are basically able to quote the whole, um, the whole thing as we did before. So we send the quote, the quote will be uh, the one, our subcharter template, we can have a little bit different subcharter template of the document with the, let's say, cancellation policy of the operator. Um, let me just show you then this document. Of course, it, this is our template, so it's not configured well enough to take the pictures I've uploaded, but then they should appear here. And then the price we were given, this will go to the, um, let's say, to the client. Mm -hmm. uh, also, what is possible here, you can exchange messages with this operator who performs the flight, this ABC company. So then I can put the subject. I can also um, have, uh, you know, the, the whole body of the email and whatever message they reply, it will also appear here. So we have kind of like two fronts here. Here we will have messages exchanged with the client and here we'll have messages that we exchange with the operator. Uh, but let's say that, okay, we had this one option, but we would like to also find subcharters in Abinode. We want some more options to give to the client, not only one. Then I can click on this find subcharter. Mm -hmm. And then Leon is taking me automatically to Abinode. Mm -hmm. And already our route is here. Yes, so from Moscow to Geneva, the dates, what was the passenger's preference? And if I I have here Leon operator, so if I find it, okay, I have here Leon operator. This is test environment in Avinod. And we can see that on our Global Express that we have, uh, this is the price. So I can say, okay, I accept it on all three, um, all three options that I have available. Uh, and I can send the request. Uh, of course, if I want to, I can um, basically before sending edit the price, you know, it's, it's just uh, what each operator can do. And if I send those, those will appear in Leon. So if I go back to Leon, I will have those quotes uh, available with those subcharter aircraft with the price. So it, it is this what is available. And then you are able to again send, uh, basically send the client all of the available options. And for example, here, we already have a warning, let's say that airport is closed at the time of departure. So if any changes need to be done, um, then you can still do it. Here, it jumped back as my aircraft because <laughs> I quoted it to myself, but in normal life, those aircraft will appear as the subcharters a subcharter aircraft and all of the profile of the aircraft from Avinode, so the manufacturer, the pictures of the aircraft, everything will be downloaded as well to produce documents. So it will just save a lot of your time. You don't have to do it manually. This will be all downloaded once you select uh, a particular aircraft to, to do your flight. Okay, let me just uh, now look at the next step. So. We will look at the requests for flight that are submitted via the owner app. As you can see, the owner app that we have now uh, allows the owner to ask for a flight. What all they need to do is just to say where they, uh, what is the departure airport, what is the destination airport, uh, time of the flight, one time of the flight is enough, Leon will calculate the, the other, and then the passengers. Uh, the owners can also see all of the requests and um, and they can see what is basically, uh, what, what is the status, yes, of, of them. Uh, how this request will appear in Neon. That's interesting, so let me just show it to you now. Okay, let's share the screen. Okay, 
here we go. Uh, so if we'll go to the request quotes view, what we have here available are requests coming from the owner app. So like this one means, okay, like this one. And if we open, for example, this particular request, it means, okay, uh, it has been uh, requested by Thomas Delta, one of our aircraft owners, okay. Assignee, it is Sue Adams, so she's one of our sales uh, persons. Uh, and already here we can see, okay, the request was fine, but now we have a warning here that the airport is closed at the time of arrival. We may consider if we need this particular leg. Maybe not. Maybe if not, we can just adjust it, say, okay, let's remove this leg. So then we can see, okay, those are the two legs we speak about. And then we are able to quote this flag using like an internal price list that you'll use uh, for the client, for the, for the aircraft owner. Sometimes the aircraft owners may ask you, okay, can you tell me what will be the cost of this flight before they even fly? So you can use one of the price lists that you created. For example, you can have the cost estimate of a flight for client X. You may use it and then it will take all of those parameters you configured and it will come up with a price. And then by quoting, you may just send this cost odds estimate to the client using, again, uh, the selected template of the email and the selected template of the document. Also, if any changes to this, what the client wanted needs to be done, for example, time of the departure needs to be adjusted or the date of the flight needs to be adjusted, you can also use it in the body of the email, just communicate to the aircraft owner, okay, we cannot fly um, at 8.20 in the morning, uh, local, but we can do the flight at 9.20. Will you agree? Are you fine with it? So basically you can kind of use this platform also to communicate with, with the owners. Okay, let me just now uh, jump to the next part that I have for you. So our sales reports. The sales reports, um, of, I will just first show you those that are ready made. So there are some available. But the most powerful thing is the report we set. So I will also show you a couple of reports in the report we set that will give you an understanding what you can have there and what you can expect uh, about Leon and reports. Okay, let me just share screen with you once again. Okay. In the reports, as you can see here, we have some sales reports. One of them, let's say, is called uh, top 100 routes, <laughs> and you can just select any period of time. Let's just look at October and uh, available, so it will be a mixture of plan and journey logs. And if I click on show, then the system will show me all of my routes and what was, you know, which were the busiest ones. Of course, I can have it in a longer period of time, like a year, uh, just by uh, shuffling those dates. So those are one of the ready sales reports but let's just jump to the report wizard which is more much more interesting than this one uh, what i was showing you for example let's look at the report called mptlx report if i want to i can focus on a report let's say i want to look uh, for the next uh seven days so the system will show me what are my mptlx in my next seven days mm. if i want to change a little the template of this particular uh, report, I can do it. So for example, here we have, um, as you can see, um, departure airport, IATA ICO code, but we don't have the departure airport name. We have it for the destination airport. We have the full name, but we don't have it here. So if I want to edit this particular report, I can go it here and I can say, okay, departure airport, the city, from the plan, because we have it from the plan. For journey log, it will be um, after the flight is completed. So now we, we will just use it from the plan. Okay, if I refresh it, we will see that this column appears as the last one. If I want to shuffle it again, if I want to move it so that it makes a little bit more sense, I can first of all, for example, if I don't want this country code, I don't need it, I can just remove this column simply by clicking here. And I can take this you know, and just move it here. And now it will just make more sense because we have the codes of the airport and the name 
both for the departure and destination airport. Uh, once you save the report this way, uh, of course, you will be able to use it later on. And what is very important, Leon allows you to have a special sending schedule. So, for example, um, if you want to, um, to this particular report to be sent, let's say, once a day, once a week, or once a month <laughs> to someone, um, you can use it. For example, you may have brokers you cooperate with, um, and you may want them to get emails about uh, your empty legs, let's say, in your next seven days. So basically, you can create such a report, and this report will be automatically sent to them, let's say, every day or once a week, however you prefer this to work. Uh, so this is one of the reports I wanted to show you. Let's just look at one more. Mm, with the reports, one thing is that for every report, you can have reports just for yourself, so the ones that you only use, and the reports shared by all of the people in your company. Uh, let's just look at the report, for example, fleet sales report. Here I can look at, um, maybe not last, okay, previous month, um, or maybe a little bit even more. Okay, 30 days from now, okay. Now it is a little bit wider range of time. Here I can see all of my aircraft daily that, that were that were basically, uh, that were some quotes. Mm, the, I can see the price of those. I can see, you know, the sum of the flight time. There can be some pie charts. So any type of report you want to, you can do it. And for example, here, if I want to edit data here again, I can do it the same way as previously. So for example, if I want to add aircraft type, I can add it. It's, uh, it will again appear as the last column. Uh, but again, I can change the, the order of the columns. So we just want you to use the reports to build them the way you want to. And if you need a report for a particular customer, if you need a report, uh, uh, for example, about flights, let's say only flights occurring in um, domestic flights, international flights, not a problem. The Leon can handle this and we can always help you upset a particular report if you need help. All of those reports can be exported to Excel, to CSV file. So this is also another potential behind it. Okay, let me jump now to the next part that I have prepared for you. Uh, the potential of Leon's API. Uh, as you know, we have an API. Mm, what is very important, this API is for free. So you can use it. Uh, we don't charge you for um, basically calling our API and taking data out. And as an example, I can show you one of our clients, Ergo, they are from Germany. They created on their website a special mechanism that you can just tell from where to where you want to go with how many passengers and when and this this process and then it comes up with a price on the website and this price comes from Leon from our API from the price lists that are created in Leon so this is just to you know let you know how potentially you can use the API uh, some of our clients will also display their empty legs on their websites also using our API uh, so if you are interested in the potential of how this API can be used, please contact us. We can share the API with you. It's totally for free, as I've mentioned. We are also, um, if you don't have any people that can build those functions for you, let's say on your website, we are also cooperating with some software houses that can do this work for you. So, I mean, if there is, if you have any software needs, software development needs uh, outside Leon, outside of Leon, you can use our API and just build on it. Uh, and we'll be happy to, to share this API with you. Okay. Um, and now the last thing, I think everyone was waiting for it, uh, is that what are, what are our development plans? Uh, first of all, the really, really uh, long awaited, mobile sales app so you will be able to do the entire process of quoting um uh, basically sending the templates of the 
documents um, to the client, the quotation, the charter contract, everything from the telephone, from, from your telephone. That's something our clients are asking about. And as you can see here, there are already some screenshots from this um, mobile application. The works are very advanced and we hope to deliver it uh, at the beginning of next year. Uh, so, you know, keep our fingers crossed. And if you are considering Glee on sales, that's definitely something that you will use. That's for sure. Um, I was mentioning uh, the, the next point is our owner app. Uh, as I was mentioning, the owner app is uh, is pretty basic in this in the form it is now. But we want to also build this. Uh, first of all, we'll allow it to be a white label app. Mm, it means that you'll be able to personalize this for your company. Use your logo, um, not have it like a Leon app, but have it as your company app uh, that you share with the aircraft owners. Uh, it will be possible for the aircraft owners to see the whole schedule of their aircraft, not only the flights they book themselves, but also all other flights of the aircraft. Um, and we definitely want to develop this application more. So th there will be more definitely from the next year about the owner app. Um, so please stay tuned <laughs> for that. Then um, something which is not exactly in the sales, uh, but the crew app, will. we want to add uh, ability for the crew members to add and remove passengers before the flight. Because, you know, that's very important. Very often the situation is that the aircraft takes off and you are not sure <laughs> if everyone appeared or if there are no extra people or no changes. So the crew will be able to update that with the crew mobile application. And we will definitely develop this um, at the beginning of next year. Um, that's what can be expected. And with the sub charters, um, something that um, definitely uh, needs to be developed because now the subcharters appear in the sales module, but in, they don't appear in the ops module. Therefore, you cannot have the flight watch for them. So uh, you cannot have the automatic lane, landing report, takeoff report sent to the client of yours that is flying a subcharter aircraft. So we are now working on refactoring um, the whole way the flight watch works in Lyon to allow this. Uh, and we will definitely uh, develop this also next year uh, for anyone using Subcharter. This will be also, you know, a step forward uh, with some new features that will just help you, <laughs> you know, communicate to your clients automatically without an effort. And we have a lot of more development plans, but those are the most crucial ones and the ones that are. Uh, I think most interesting from the salesperson's um, perspective. So thank you very much for your time today. As I was telling at the beginning, this webinar is recorded, so you will be able to watch it again or watch partial parts of it <laughs> again. Um, if you want to ask any more detailed questions, please contact us. We'll schedule individual calls with you just to help you. And of course, uh, our team is answering your questions on the chat. So if there, but if there is anything more you want to ask, please feel free to, to ask the questions. And please feel free to contact our support team to help you with the settings uh, of DocuSign, of uh, all of the integrations, to help you with the different document templates, email templates, and the whole workflow. And I hope that you'll be able to enjoy our sales um, module. And, you know, I just want you to have very, very <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy charter sales with Liam. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.